Hello from Cambridge, Massachusetts. My name is Ryan Ko, and this is my sample teaching video. I'm going to be going through an example AP statistics problem on hypothesis testing. So now that we know the different versions of hypothesis tests, let's go through an example where we'll have to select the test and then apply it to get a conclusion from an actual real-life situation. Let's look at the problem. A cigarette industry spokesperson remarks that the average level of tar in cigarettes across the industry is 5 milligrams. A reporter wants to test these claims. He selects a simple random sample of 15 cigarettes and finds the mean to be 5.63 milligrams per cigarette with a standard deviation of 1.61 milligrams per cigarette. So this is an example of a hypothesis test where we need to test a sample mean against an unknown population mean. Now the hypothesis from the cigarette industry spokesperson is 5 milligrams. So, the first thing to do in a hypothesis test is to state the hypothesis. We learned that the null hypothesis is the hypothesis that's true until proven wrong. So let's write the null hypothesis now. The null hypothesis H0 is going to be the claim of the cigarette industry spokesperson. So, that mu is less than or equal to 5 milligrams. The alternate hypothesis is the hypothesis that we're trying to test for. In this case, that's the reporter's hypothesis. So let's write that. The alternate hypothesis is that mu is greater than 5 milligrams. So that's the alternate hypothesis. Now we need to pick our statistical test. Let's look at this problem one more time to see how we're going to pick our statistical test. We know two general categories of tests, t-tests and z-tests. There are a couple of things here that will help us choose. First of all, let's look at the sample size. The sample size is n equals 15. That's the sample that we have. Second, let's look at what other numbers we can write down. n equals 15, the sample standard deviation is 1.61, so let's write that, s equals 1.61. And we don't really have any other information. So we don't know anything about the actual cigarette population. We don't know the actual mean, that's what we're testing for. But more importantly, we don't know sigma, the standard deviation of that population. So sigma equals question mark. This is a value that we don't know, and we can't do a z-test without. So, because we don't know sigma, and that the sample size is less than the value of 30. Remember, at the value of 30, we can approximate t distributions to look like normal distributions. Since we don't have n equals 30, we need to use a t-test for small samples. So now let's go on and do this problem out. The first thing we need to do is to talk about the conditions that we need to use a t-test. First, we know that we have a random sample because it's given in the problem. The second condition is that the data is normally distributed. Now, unfortunately, this problem doesn't tell us anything about the distribution of the data from those 15 cigarettes. So, to continue with this problem this way, we'll have to assume that. So, let's write that assumption down. Now, on the AP test, if the problem gives you numbers, maybe 15 measurements of tar for cigarettes, then we could do a couple of things. We could draw a box and whisker plot, or we could do a histogram. Now, between these two things, we draw them out, and you can see maybe it looks symmetrical. If it looks evenly distributed, then it's much more likely that we can assume a normally distributed sample. But for the purposes of this problem, we can continue this way. So the next thing to do is to calculate the testing statistic. 
So to calculate the testing statistic, we use the formula T equals the sample mean minus the hypothesis mean divided by the sample standard deviation over the square root of the sample size. So in this case, we've got 5.63 milligrams is the sample measured mean, 5 is the hypothesized mean, the sample uh, standard deviation is 1.61 milligrams, and then n equals 15. That's 15 samples. So let's do that really quickly. 5.63 minus 5 divided by 1.61 over the square root of 15 comes out to about 1.5. So our test statistic t is going to be 1.5. The next step is to find the critical t statistic, the cutoff. So to do this, we need a couple of things. First, remember that the degrees of freedom, df, equals n minus 1, 15 minus 1 is 14. Second, we need to pick a significance level for this test. A standard significance level is alpha equals 0.1. Alpha equals 0.1. So from these two bits of information, we can determine the critical t-statistic. Now remember the way to do this is to look it up in the back on the AP Statistics t-distribution uh, chart. You go to df equals 14, alpha equals 0.1, and the number you'll come out with is this. We'll get the critical t to be 1.345. Let's represent this visually on the distribution. So if this is the t distribution, with df equals 14, 10% of the area under this curve is going to be at this critical t value of 1.345. That's going to be about right here. Remember, what that means is that if our test statistic T lands in this area over here, it's in this area over here, then we can safely say that these results at a 90% confidence level are due not to chance, that they're statistically significant. So, this is the test statistic that we calculated of 1.5. So drawing that up here, that's going to be about right here, 1.5. So because of this result, we now have enough information to state our conclusions. To state our conclusions, we need to look back at the hypotheses that we came up with. So. Let's write a couple of things down. First, we'll write that 1.5 is greater than 1.345. That means that the value we've gotten is in the critical area, the shaded area over here. And because of that, we can reject the null hypothesis. We can say, reject H0. And because we reject the null hypothesis, we also accept the alternate hypothesis. This information is enough at a statistical level for a result. But for the AP test, we need to also write the result in terms of the solution. We need to use a couple more sentences. So, to finish this problem, we need to say that the reporter is 90% confident that his results were not due to chance. The reporter is 90% confident that the actual mean of tar levels in cigarettes is greater than the hypothesized level of 5 milligrams. And those are the steps to do a hypothesis t-test on a population mean.